Welcome back to the show. This is Phil Vischer Podcast. I'm Phil Vischer. I'm here with... Thank you. Thank you, Taco. I was just testing it. Thank you, Taco. <laughs> I thought you were giving him a shout-out. No. I'm here with Christian Taylor. Hey. Hi, Christian. How are you? Good. And Sky Jatani. Hi. Hi, Sky. How are you? I'm all right. Good. You're not quite... You're still You're still subdued. I am subdued. Subdued, subdued in salmon. Subdued in salmon. Subtle Remember salmon. Remember that Tom Hanks film? Um, <laughs> Sleepless in Seattle and subdued in salmon. It was the follow-up. Because there's salmon in Seattle. You're back to gray. That's I am nice. back to gray. That's nice. Yeah. And he has a matching chapeau. What? Oh, you're wearing hats. I am. What are those? These are our product placement hats. Oh, what do they <laughs> say on them? Oh, they say Galaxy Buck. Now, what is that? Is that well, like a hip new clothing line I for heard the, the we, youth? I heard. I have the inside scoop. Yeah. I think it's this amazing movie that's coming out. Really? Yeah. How about that? Wow. It's coming out around Christmas time. You can get it before Christmas, actually. Yeah, you can get it before Christmas. In October. Like October. (laughs) Like October 20th, I think? I think that's right. Something like that? Yeah. And it's a space film. That's why it's called Galaxy Buck. And if you subscribe to Jelly Telly at jellytelly.com. You get a free hat. No, no. you don't get a free hat. make promises. But you can watch, uh, I think you can watch Galaxy Buck on October 16th. Four days before the, the full movie, yeah, mm. yeah, not like a bootleg version. No, not like a no, it's someone held up a camcorder in a theater. No, <laughs> that's, how, it's not you, coming that's how you theaters. filmed it. It's not long, <laughs> it's not long enough. <laughs> that kind of is how he filmed theaters. it. It's 40 minutes long, it's just the perfect length for your children who sometimes get a little antsy in a full length feature film. Am I right? You are right, maybe it depends on the film, it does. Hey, it's a podcast. What do you know? Hey, it's a podcast. And we got video. Hey, it's a podcast. So lend an ear. The Phil Fisher podcast starts right here. We'll talk to Sky. Hi, Phil. Hi, Sky. And Christian, too. Hi, Phil. Hi. We don't have a guest, not today, for you. But we got Galaxy Buck hats. Why are you staring at the because ceiling? I'm blocking the lights because I've noticed you've cleaned up the studio. Yeah, I cleaned up the studio. And you've got styrofoam on the ceiling. Yeah, um, that's that's the volcano yeah. interior is is hanging hey, up in the rafters. Nice. Hey, it's a podcast. Slendon here. The Phil Fisher podcast starts <clears throat> right here. The Phil Fisher podcast starts right here. Ooh, that was ironic. That was- I'm waiting for the last note. That's it. Thank you. Shoo. <laughs> Couldn't go on without that. Yeah, so the, the film is is technically, well, it is so close to being done that it might be done. That you made hats. It might be done by the time we finish recording the podcast. Wow. It, and Ooh. will be done by the time this airs tomorrow. Are your minions behind the scenes putting the final touches on it? Is that what? Bill. Bill? Bill. Your yeah, if you're Bill? wondering why Bill. Bill is not giggling in the background, Bill. it's because he's been, like, enslaved he's in been, a cubicle. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he's you know. editing. And right. if you editing. watch Galaxy Buck, just know, yes, Phil is awesome. And he did all the mm-hmm. writing mm-hmm. and all again. the puppets. Phil is awesome. Thank you. But Bill is amazing. He's the unsung Bill hero. Is he the, is the unsung Bill hero. Bill is the glue that yes. sticks together the disparate pieces of things that I make. Is he the wind beneath your wings, Phil? He's, he is. He's the glue beneath my wings. Keeps me from flying off. Well, he into, actually into created directions. some space effects and things. Yeah, some really cool space stuff. Yeah. There's really cool space stuff. I showed it to my mother last night. And? The, the, the way it is right now. Her opinion matters. But she has to say nice she things. She liked it very much. She said it was deeper and richer than she thought it was going to be. Oh, good. <laughs> you mean That's, that deeper, means a lot coming from Scotty. Deeper and richer than she expected from you? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you could say <laughs> something that. Something like that? Yeah, something like that. Okay, who watched the uh, finale of Alone? Sky Jatani I did. Because I was stranded and alone, <laughs> believe it or not. With Sam Larson. In New York? <laughs> yeah, I got stranded in New York last How week. How can you be yeah. alone in New York? I managed. Yeah. All right. So, what did you think, Mr. Jatani? Well, and here's the funny thing is I, I liked it. But you hadn't watched any of the other episodes. But now my family is hooked on watching from the beginning. We oh. watched two oh. episodes last night, I think. Okay, yeah. So, I, and I'm trying to tell them, I'm not giving away who won. Well, that's good. So, but yeah, yeah they're into it. But I just want to so no say. no spoilers. No spoilers. We won't say oh. who won. Oh. We're not going to say who won because you need to watch it. You should watch it. You should. But maybe they all yeah. have. And they already you think know. They, they've all watched it? Well, think, they certainly can Google who won. Yeah, you can certainly Google who won. It was, okay. it was down to Alan and Sam. It seemed a little anticlimactic, but then again, I hadn't 
built up the tension yeah, over right. multiple episodes. Right. You you had to you had to it's an endurance thing. Yeah. And so and, and watching the whole thing was part of the experience of how they paid it off mm-hmm. in the end. It was worth it. I thought I thought Alan's some of his musings at the end were very mm-hmm. intriguing. You know, because he was talking about things like that we don't because everyone who lasted that long, all the four guys that lasted that long, found it to be a life changing experience. You know, like mm-hmm. like it distilled you. I think Alan says this will boil you down to your essence hmm. and show you who you really are. And do you think that's because of the the challenge and the difficulty of surviving in that wilderness, or is it simply being alone? It's more the being alone. See, that's what I assume too. Yeah. And, and, and there, we can do that, you know. Like, there are things yeah. you can do. You, you can be alone without having to, to survive in the wilderness? Yeah. Of course, you could go to New York City and be <laughs> in an apartment or a, like a hotel room and just sit there, and they can push you food like through your door. And really? Well, not watch there TV. has also been a be spiritual City. practice yeah. for many centuries of solitude. Tell me more about this. Well, like in a monastery or in a retreat. It doesn't have to be for 50 mm-hmm. days. It can be for two days, three. I've been reading a book about Jesuit spirituality. and Really? Yeah. Is it? Would you describe it as a page turner? It is actually a page turner. Okay. It's good. Well, I read Brother and, Lawrence's book. Yeah, there's another example. That was a great one that talks about practicing the presence. Yeah. So there, there's a long, long history of... Uh, intentional solitude, maybe yeah. not months, but well, Jesus a, did it exactly for forty right. days. Right. So there's a there's an important part of spiritual development that you disconnect from everyone else to get in touch with what's really going right. on inside of you. Watching and God in the midst watching of that. the show alone made me want to go pitch a tent in my backyard and just sit there for a few days. But can I just say one thing? Yeah, that plays in completely yeah. to who you are. It is why you have three offices, and one of them is completely alone, where only a select few know where it is, and you go there yeah. to be alone. Yeah, but it's to do work. You know, the, it's, yeah, but, it's I, 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 I want. Ostensibly, but you like being alone. Yeah. Well, solitude is harder for extroverts probably than for yeah. introverts. But Phil's, yeah. I, I agree with Phil though, because when he gets alone, it is mostly to work. So you need to be alone without the work. Right. So that you actually have to come to terms right. with your inner. So thoughts. the fact that they couldn't bring anything with them, you right? Know, you couldn't have. You couldn't. Even, well, you couldn't bring your Bible, which I would want to bring if I was going to be alone. But you couldn't bring any books. You couldn't bring any magazines. You, you there's just you had nothing to mm-hmm. do but think. That is interesting. If I was going to go off with to practice the presence of Christ in solitude and I didn't have a Bible. Yeah. You'd have to rely on your Bible knowledge. I'd have to rely on my Bible knowledge. That would be challenging. Childhood of Bible memorization. And experiencing God in the present moment Mm -hmm. wherever I was. Okay. Hmm. So anyway, congratulations to Sam Larson for being an extraordinary guy and doing Lincoln, Nebraska proud. Uh, he said they did. He, I don't know if he said this on the air last week or if he told us afterwards that a because uh, um, he was eating about a mouse a day, which they said on the air is the caloric equivalent of a single pizza roll. Right. And a, a grocery store in Lincoln, Nebraska has given him pizza rolls for a year. <laughs> That's funny. That's a reward. I for, bet he doesn't want them. <laughs> I bet some of the meat in those pizza rolls could be rodent. Could oh, be. stop. It's mouse-like. Yeah. Don't even suggest mouse-like. that. Mouse-like. Okay. Um, I think we have to start a new segment on the show because it's just it's coming up so much in my news feed. What is Franklin Graham angry at this week? That's our new segment. You need some music with that. <coughs> the, the, I call it the Graham Jam. What is Franklin Graham angry about this week? Okay. It What's he angry about this week? It didn't need to rhyme or anything, did it? I guess not. Okay. So Franklin's angry. <sighs> he's he's moving into a state of semi constant anger, which I don't think is is helpful. Maybe we should have him on and let him speak for himself. Okay. Yeah. Let's call. <laughs> I'll call Franklin Graham. Say, come on. Well, he's he keeps putting Facebook to- posts and, oh, and he does? a number. Of, yes. And these are all his things he's posting on Facebook oh. that he's mad about. So, so he target says target store. Does he have control over his own Facebook page or is someone doing this on his behalf? Do you think he just has a really angry minion? Well, aren't they supposed to be? Aren't minions paid to be angry? No, they're paid to be obedient. 
Okay. They can't be angry. Well, I'm just saying there's, there's a lot of well-known like, people who don't manage themselves. their own social media. Is my only right. Point. But but when it's it, when it's generating this much press, I would think you would start paying pretty close attention because so. he's generating a lot of press with his social media. So Target stores. Did you hear what Target stores did? It's got some, Not recently. some we talked about this. Conservatives cranky. We did. Yeah, I, I mentioned it briefly Not a couple recently. episodes ago. I don't know. Okay, maybe what they maybe took out their gender here. specific. Yes, they, for kids. Oh, I yeah. Yeah. Oh, right. yes. So there's no more, no more boy toy, boys toys and girls toys. There's just going to be toys. Yes, and, and we, not in pink and blue aisles. And not in pink and blue aisles. Just in aisles, mm -hmm. like green or so purple. How will the girls and the boys know what they're supposed to be playing with? Mm -hmm. If they're not color coded, because they'll know what they like, For, <gasps> and some boys but might. What like. if they? Don't? And they'll know what is advertised to them on television. So, I think Jesus said something about this. You will know them by their toys. Franklin Graham <laughs> said, "I think Target may be forgetting who has made their stores strong. It's not gender neutral people out there." It's working American families, fathers and mothers with boys and girls they love. What's next? Are they going to try to make people believe that pink or blue baby showers are politically incorrect? I have news for them and for everyone else. Is he calling for a boycott of Target? God created two different genders. Jesus said, have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Graham said, adding, you can't get any clearer than that that Target should have different colored toy aisles. Graham urged supporters to call Target and let the store know they will shop there when the genders God created are appreciated. He's calling for a boycott of Target. Ugh. I don't think that's going to work. It's getting kind of predictable, isn't it? But that's but, not all. But oh, I was going to say, I think there is some, <laughs> some truth in there. God, did, you keep God did create two different genders. He created two different genders. That that's correct. absolutely so. I, and I do think that our society is trying to make everything equal and not see that there are differences. I think the real issue is going to be when Target says they're getting rid of gender-specific bathrooms. Yeah. Because you think that would be the next step, wouldn't it? Why? Actually, a lot of but people are not, doing that. They I just know. put WC on there now for water closet. Now we have to be English, too? Well, I don't know. I was in New York, and that was the trendy thing. I say, where's the water closet? <laughs> you I could say, pick uh -huh. whichever WC you wanted to go into. It Why wasn't... can't they call it a bathroom? Why does it have to be a WC? Because it's more trendy. Where is the gender neutral potty place? If you put a B on there, and I mean, you know, WC is short, sweet, to the point. It's English. It's British. Is Next there anything else going on in, in New York, and... Sky, that you think <sighs> might have interesting I, Wait, before we gender... hop to that, are we going to finish with, because that's just <laughs> taking us down a whole yeah, other road. Yeah, but that's road. related. It's related. It it's is related. related. See, what uh, people, mom <clears throat> started tweeting pictures from Target. This is what actually started it because there was an aisle in, in some Targets that in one of the categories was it said building toys, girls building toys were, were two, the two items you oh. found in that aisle. And some moms were really offended by that and so they took pictures of it and tweeted, oh, so there's building toys and then there's girls building so toys. So is that like Legos? Because the, there's yes. Legos and then there's a special line of girls Legos. Yes, which is interesting because there's a special line of girls Legos specifically because the Lego company couldn't get girls to buy the regular Legos. Right. And the funny, like my two younger kids <coughs> both would love playing, one's a boy and one's a girl, they both love playing Legos. Lucy has some of the girl Lego sets, but she has no problem playing with the non-girl Lego yeah. sets also. Okay. So, some, it, but I'm imagining Target took their cue from companies like Lego that had regular builder yes. sets and then girl right. builder sets. Right. So if, if someone came in saying, "Where are the girls Legos?" They'd say, yeah. "Oh, but, it's but over here there. to right. clarify, yeah, girls Legos are not like made any differently necessarily. It is the subject matter yes, that the, that they deal and with, the colors. And, and so the colors. they don't need to put <clears throat> girls Legos on there because it's clear when you see them exactly what. They are, or who's going to like them? I mean, you just make something, and uh, whoever likes it likes right. it. So, so you're not offended that there wouldn't be a, a, an aisle labeled boys' toys. I think it's much to do about nothing, honestly. I, I, I think it's, I think it's, well, which toys your boy likes? I think it, he knows. 
Yeah, I remember when and my I son was. Have to tell I don't him. need an aisle. I don't. Right. Oh, Pottery Barn is in trouble. Pottery Barn is in trouble <laughs> because they're back to school backpacks. I think it's Pottery Barn. They're back to school backpacks. They come in colors for boys and colors for girls, and then there are uh, moms can customize them with different like sew on images like a flower, a butterfly, a race car, a dinosaur. Uh-huh. And a mom said, okay, I want that. I want the, the, the pretty one, and I want it with the dinosaur, because that's mm-hmm. what my daughter wants. And they said, no, we can't, we, we can't put the dinosaur on that. Uh-huh. That's the girl's backpack. The girls' backpacks can only have the butterfly or the... Because all these different items were in completely different cities in China, <laughs> and they couldn't actually intermingle them. And she it? said, it's the same <clears throat> backpack, it's just a different color. What do you mean you can't put that one on that backpack? And said, it's just not, that's not, that's a, a boy's image. It doesn't go on a girl's backpack. Oh, so, see, that's... That's mm. problematic. And this is mm. why people like Donald Trump so much. Well, and here's the thing, though. Because he tells it like it is? Because he... Or because he's a big jerk. No, because I think he represents everyone's complete exhaustion over the political correctness that is taking over our culture. Well, I tell you where we get confusing is if we take this to the ultimate extreme where, like, you have no signs in Walmart or Target, like men's section, women's section, boys' section, girls' section, that's going to be confusing because... Target said... We are not taking gender signage away from boys' and girls' clothing because there is a difference in fit in the way clothing is made. So it's not right. necessarily because the pink clothes go over here and the manly clothes go over there, but but physiology, a shirt and pants fit differently. So they're so actually acknowledging that male and female bodies in yes. general tend to be different. Yes. Well, and that's news. There you go. That probably won't fly in New York. <laughs> yes, why is why? that, Sky? So I'm, I was what in, is it that you're dying to talk about? I was in New York last Thursday to do some... some I heard that. And, and I stuff. was there the week before. And you got trapped there. And uh, my flight got canceled, so I got stuck there for a whole other day with just time to kill. And I'm walking through Times Square. <laughs> Where I had walked the week before. At first, I saw the, the Property Brothers mm-hmm. from HGTV. Mm-hmm. They were going into Starbucks. They're right. taller than I expected. Guess are who they, I ran are into. Are they gender neutral? No, they are definitely male. They're very, are they like very, are they like guy guys? Like manly men? Well, one of them I think is more the builder and the other one's the realtor, right? Okay. So I don't know yeah. how that falls. Is one on the, the builder and the other is the, the decorator? They're both more masculine than I am. Okay. So let's yes. put it that way. Okay. Um, are they as masculine as I am? Clearly. <laughs> more. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> anyway, so I get I get past that, and then you get into the part of Times Square where they have all the characters, like the Elmos and the yeah. superheroes. That, that, who are all, by the way. That keep getting into fights yeah. with each and other. They're all getting pictures taken with Asian tourists. Yes. <laughs> and then I see the naked cowboy. Yeah, naked he's cowboy. Everywhere. I didn't know he, about the naked he's cowboy. He's been there for years. He's been there forever, he's, and he's, he's just not wearing, really he's naked. wearing some whitey tighties. And a guitar. And a guitar and a cowboy hat. And he's really And he's got boots. Because then I, I had to Google him to figure out what is I this I sent you a picture cowboy. of him. Yeah, you did? I, oh, you, yeah, you did, but it didn't come through. It didn't it come oh, through. It just, I got a little question You guys didn't see mark. the picture of the no. two ladies then? No. no. But I, I, that's but what I googled I was, Times Square to figure out what was going yeah. on there. Oh, I took pictures of what you're about to talk about, and I sent them to you. <clears> I, well, I, I didn't get I was either. wondering why didn't I didn't come, get a reaction. didn't come through. Oh. My... my system is set up to reject any pictures that come from you. Just so you know. <laughs> um, These would have so been I, definitely I, I, rejected. Later on, I'm just looking at the news on my on my phone or something, and I see this article about there's this big controversy in New York, which I did not know about, because apparently there have been, a, I think, two women in Times Square who have been completely topless with body paint, like right. stars and stripes the body Amer- paint. Yeah, American flag. Right, flags, who, are, like, who are kind of doing the naked cowboy thing and having the picture taken with tourists, and there's a controversy over... Whether or not that's appropriate, I did not see them myself when right. I was in Times Square. Oh, I did. And the first question was, is that legal? Right. Are they breaking any laws? And a, they're topless in Times Square. But let me let me just say one thing about this. So truly, everything important is painted. Everything important. I, I paint everything important. Everything important whenever I'm is naked. painted. Yeah, but paint is not clothing. Precisely. You certainly <laughs> can see exactly what they want well, you to yeah, see. That's anyway. <laughs> So it is not apparently it is completely legal for women to be topless in New York City. Yes, New York City, you can be topless. Just keep that in mind, uh, Grandma, when you, next time you're in New York City, you don't have to wear your top. It is true. My grandparents were always complaining. 
<laughs> so the interesting thing as I was reading the article was uh, the mayor of New York City, if you don't know, Bill de Blasio, is, mm-hmm. is very liberal. Very liberal. And he prides himself on being very liberal. And he thinks it's inappropriate for these women to be topless in Times Square because they've right. really rejuvenated Times Square to be very family friendly. There's right. an M&M store there and, and Toys there, R Us. there are, on uh, several of the, the New York n- newspapers, there are pictures of the topless women having their pictures taken with boys that Little are boys. clearly underage. Right. You know, so 16, 15 year old boys. And the, there's this question, is that... Is this, is this right. it, whether or not, no one wants to say it's wrong, because we don't like to say anything is wrong. Oh, I said it was wrong. Except for racism and and genderism and that that stuff. Yeah. And, and intolerance. Okay, those things are wrong. But you can't say this is wrong because it means you're probably old-fashioned and you're probably anti-gay or something in or some something. way. You're, you're, you're not open-minded. Yes, so you can't say <clears throat> it's wrong, but you can say, wow, that doesn't seem to be the environment we're trying to create here for commercial reasons. Yeah, exactly. So the, the defense that's been put forward for these women is that how come the naked cowboy gets to be topless, but these women don't? <laughs> and I know I've been accused. Now, they would have a problem if he was bottomless. Y- well, yes. we would all have a problem <laughs> yes. if he were bottomless. Yeah, although he does have a guitar hanging in front of him. Yes. I mean, the bottom line is, you know. But the, 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 they're trying to make an equivalence between a man wearing only underwear and women wearing only underwear, meaning bottom right. underwears. Right, right. And... The thing, I, I get accused on this podcast from time to time of being liberal, and yet here I am being <laughs> the old fuddy-duddy conservative, but I don't understand when in our culture we equated equality as being same, like right. the same... Interchangeability. Yeah, so, uh, I, yeah, men and women should absolutely be treated equally in our society and in our culture, but that does not mean that men and women are the same. They right. are different, and right. our bodies are different, as even Target is willing to acknowledge. And to say that men can be topless, therefore women should be allowed to be topless, is kind of a ridiculous argument. And there argument. was a parade in New York yesterday, the day before yesterday? Yeah, recently. Yes, called... Oh, we're having we Sky can't left say New that. York. We can't say that. <laughs> yeah, what is it called? I it's uh, it's called uh, something that you can't say. Nipple pride. What? I just said don't say that. <laughs> what? I what? just said pigs have nipples. Uh, I guess you're right. You can milk anything with nipples. <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. I apologize have to all of you listening cat? out there. I I don't know I what to nipples. do. I try. Can you milk? Would you like? Would you like? <laughs> try as much as I can. <laughs> the only thing I can do is talk louder. <laughs> and I I could try that, but I don't think it's gonna work. So, so, nipple pride, yeah, <laughs> parade, uh huh, yeah, is yeah. is women protesting, ironically protesting in New York where it is legal to be topless, protesting that there's a lack of gender equality around toplessness worldwide, and and the the parade this year happened I think in six different countries in you know ten different cities mm-hmm. of women going topless to protest that women aren't supposed to go topless but men are. But the, I just find that it's just insane. Why? Why? Because articulate it, it, this. we have we have equated equality with the need to be the same for every. So, for example, yeah. we, I think we can all admit that a ten-year-old child legally should be considered equal in value to a forty-year-old person. Yes. But yet, as a society, we recognize that a ten-year-old child is different than a forty-year-old person, sure. and therefore we have different requirements and expectations of a ten-year-old than we do of a forty-year-old. Okay. Similarly. Men and women are equal legally under the law. They should have equal dignity and rights. And not. Yet men and women also have inherent are physiological you, differences. Are you saying our chests are different? In most cases. Most uh-huh. women don't have hair on their chests. Uh-huh. Some do. So it's okay most to men be don't have breasts if you have hair on your chests. I'm just saying. Mm-hmm. We've gotten, it's kind of gotten absurd. That's what I'm saying. And I think... I think this goes back to... Because 100 years ago, 200 years ago... A thousand years ago, go way back with me. Everybody was naked. <laughs> a thousand years ago, not everybody was naked. All right, not what a thousand. Are you talking about? Well, not a thousand, but if you go back <laughs> three thousand, they were. No. All right. Well, so maybe I don't farther. Think they were. I think you got to go back, back so far that our young Earth friends would get mad at you for going back that far. Right. Okay. But that's besides. But they did start off naked. I am right. We all about started that. off when naked. they were babies. <laughs> yes. Okay. A woman didn't run around topless 
because they would be attacked. Oh, it's your Beyonce theory. Because they were in danger. You knew you were in danger. That's why you covered up your sexuality, because if you were exposed, you were in danger. Right. Right, because you were attracting this, yeah. the narrative. Yeah, try, try the, the topless parade in uh, Kabul, in uh, Baghdad. Try that. Well, there you're going to get stoned. I, exactly. You're not going to get... You're in da- or attacked. Yeah, like in India, there's been that India. rash of horrible gang rapes. Yes, things, right? yes, because that has been the nature of men mm-hmm. in the past, is to attack women. Now... What? Uh, okay, what are you, what are you here's saying? the thing. Okay. In non... Western, for sure, you cultures. Mean, you mean Eastern? Non-Western. And non, and no, there's more than just non-Western, is just Eastern. Okay, so basically, Northern, in lots Southern. of places around the world, except yes. the United States and Canada. Well, and Western Europe. Okay, yeah. Mostly. So there are people that do have naked societies. Like in native populations. There are native populations, oh. but, but they're also, you know... There are also cultures like Sao Paulo or Brazil. You know, yeah. there are places like that where it is customarily fine not to be clothed Maybe for the most not part. Not that much, but it, there's more yeah. toplessness right. on the beach. Right. There isn't but, bottomless but, but, but on the beaches. But even even in native cultures, they're they're naked out of necessity, and uh, out of they're tradition. not out of tradition, out of and tradition. they're not they're not attacked, and they're not you know in danger. And how much research have you done? into these cultures. Oh, I've watched a lot of Natural <laughs> Geographic. Are you cross-examining her? <laughs> no, like it's her fine, except I don't care about that, but I'm not wrong. No, you're not wrong. So, are, Christian, are you making the case that it, we need to just get over our taboo of topless women? No, I'm saying it does have something to do with sort of how we've evolved as sure. cultures. Right? Given that Western yeah. civilization came out of colder climates where people tended to cover up their more sensitive bits and pieces. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You don't tend to find topless tribes so, in Northern Europe. Right. So then I guess because for the most part we've always been clothed, seeing mm-hmm. somebody unclothed... Makes you want to attack them. Right, because you're not accustomed to seeing right. that. So Whereas if we in, just desensitize ourselves by all walking around naked all the time and we would lose... Well, maybe what we could do is have like <laughs> pictures of scantily clad women and we could put them on billboards and we could put them on like the covers of magazines and we could set them like everywhere. That's a really novel idea. On television and then eventually will raise a generation of kids who do- doesn't even notice. They don't even notice. Yeah. Let me ask you something. And then you see your wife one day and you're just like, oh, what? I don't even notice you. Would it be right. better if it, if it was that way? No. If, w- if would it be was? better? I, I, no, what if we were totally desensitized to that and, and it no longer held its, like, you know, titillating grasp over us, mm-hmm. no pun intended. Well, I, th- I think there's... Do you know what I mean? I don't think you can stomp out human sexuality. No, uh, you can. You Japan's can. doing a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, they're just turning it into other... That's it's, true. It's going all robot. That's true. It's cyber sexuality. Yeah, right. it's still there. Yeah, and but sexuality in native cultures that... The there's still something that you're not supposed to uncover. Yeah, that's true. Except for in certain circumstances. There, there are still private pieces. Yeah, there are still, pri- and, and people usually aren't completely naked. There are almost no cultures where people are actually completely naked. So there's Except a on tad bit of propriety. The Discovery yeah. Channel. <laughs> yeah, when they pay them to be, right. or VH1 with Dating Naked, their new naked dating show. I didn't know about that. I hadn't heard about that either. Yeah, because tr- surviving naked was so much fun. What if you we mean actually, naked and afraid? Yes. What if we tried to date? So back to New oh. York. Here, back here, to New York. Here's what I find interesting about it is you have a, a very liberal city, a very liberal mayor of that city, who's saying, I don't think this is right in Times Square, but he can't come up with a consistent argument for right. why, why it's not right. right. Well, so that, that completely undoes your argument of you saying you're a conservative on this issue because now you are aligning yourself no, with these I think liberal... No, I, I think if there were conservatives, <laughs> they would they would have an argument to say, right. hey, you know what, it's just they, not appropriate. They'd say it's wrong it's for a woman women to are expose... Covered up. Right. So what has he said he so far? He can't say that because then he's making a value he judgment. He says he personally thinks it's appropriate, but he recognizes that it's legal. 
And the problem is... He thinks is, it's inappropriate. Yes, personally, in he thinks Square. it's inappropriate in Times Square. Because they're worried about the commercial impact of families in Times Square not wanting to visit those stores because kids. there's naked women walking around. Well, that sounds like an argument. But that's not an argument. It, I, here's what I find ironic is he can't get away with a value argument, but he can get away with an economic argument. Right. And right. That when, when, it's, when our values as a society come down to economics, that's sad. When it's purely about what's able but to make... But you said that that's what it is I for know, this I've said whole it a lot, podcast. But, but it's sad when we tell women your ability to cover up or be naked is no longer about your inherent value or dignity. It's about how we can or can't make money off of the exposure of your body. That right. is sick. That's on both sides, whether it's nudity or not nudity, it's it's objectifying women. And here's a very liberal mayor who they're all supposed to be about, you know, human dignity and equality and we're not objectifying people. And that's exactly what's going on. So uh, it's just it shows how absurd the culture has become. OK, there's something else that Franklin Graham is cr Ugh. is cranky about this week. <laughs> OK, do, do, do you know what it is? I haven't the fog yet. Something that's going on at the Orlando International Airport. Hmm. Mm. What possibly could uh, be going on there? Are they making announcements in more languages than just English? The Reverend, Reverend Franklin Graham what? has spoken out against, kind of, against Orlando International Airport's recent unveiling of plans to create a new Muslim oh, prayer room yeah. that will cost a quarter of a million dollars in taxpayer dollars and asked how asked. How loud would objections be if the money were allocated to build a prayer room for evangelical Christians or other groups? He says, let's call this what it is, a mosque. The airport already has an interfaith prayer room since 1983, but that wasn't enough. How loud do you think the objections would be today if they spent a quarter million dollars to build a new prayer room exclusively for Christians or for Jews or Mormons or any other group? Why do Muslims get, sorry, Solomon, Muslims get preference? Um... Now, the decision was made to build a new reflection room in Terminal B at the Orlando airport because em uh, Emirates Airlines announced it was adding nonstop flights from Orlando to Dubai. We flew Emirates this past fall. Which would mean an increase in passengers from the Middle East. So there would be many more passengers taking very long flights where they either start in Orlando or end in Orlando. Mm -hmm. And this, they felt, would be a convenience for them to be able to pray before they get on or get right after they get Is off the flight. Is it being sponsored by Disney? <clears throat> no, it's not being sponsored or by like Disney. like the, the Morocco being paid Pavilion well, let me ask you this. by the Is airport. this room... You know, the Interfaith Center is yes. like a chapel slash place where you can go and pray and meditate, most airports, I'm sure. Most are right. larger, yes. but have they, they have that already. Right. right. So is this a, do, do they need to have a separate prayer room because the type of prayer is different and it needs to be private? Um, I, they never articulate that, but it's actually part of a larger cluster of rooms that caters to a Middle Eastern crowd, mm -hmm. which includes the ability to wash ceremonially. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, in other words, um, if you are a practicing Muslim, you know, it's sort of like being an Orthodox Jew. Uh -huh. There are certain things you have to do at certain times of the day. Right. And it's hard to do it, you know, in the because otherwise they end up with guys doing trying to do this in the public restroom or down on a prayer shawl or a prayer rug in the public restroom, um, and so it's really a convenience. I mean, it's a form of hospitality. Yeah. And, and, and do you I, know what would be loving for Christians to do? To stop it. Go help build it. We have to stop it. Don't you think? Don't you think? Yeah. Honestly. No. I, I, I mean, wouldn't it be, it. hey, this is what your requirements are for your faith. How can I support you? Yeah. So when you, if you fly in international flights ever, I know Phil doesn't like to do that. No. He tends they're, to stay away from They're water. too long, and they don't all go to Disney World. You know, they have those, <laughs> the, you, those individual screens on the seat backs, and you can watch movies or whatever. But they also have maps on there, and you'll see a screen pop up from time to time that shows you the heading of the airplane and what direction is Mecca. Yeah. Oh. So that if you're a Muslim and you're going to do your prayer on the plane, you know you're supposed is. to face toward Mecca. If you push a button, can you get the plane to orient itself towards Mecca? I don't think so. No. You have to And if you stay in hotels overseas, depending on where you are, I've seen this quite frequently, you lay down at bed at night and you look up at the ceiling and there's a sticker on the ceiling of the hotel room with a cube-shaped icon on it, which is supposed to be the Kaaba in, in mm -hmm. Mecca, and again with an arrow that tells you what direction. So when you do your prayer, I mean, those are 
pretty standard things when you get outside. Kind of like where's Waldo? You know, where's the Kaba? Yeah, but it's what? not like there's a bazillion cubes up on the wall, and you have to find the one that's pointing no. the right way. But so you don't have to figure out no. where the Kaaba is. But it, it, you're right; it's a form of hospitality to yeah. say if you're a practicing Muslim, these are things we are going to do as a, an establishment to the, help you practice. And we don't have those things in our faith. No, there's nothing that I have an obligation to do. You know, five times a day. Well, wait a minute, though. As I'm getting on a flight, that would make it hard for me to fly. Traditionally, not on flights, but hotel rooms have carried Bibles for long, 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 long time. Yeah. Thanks to the Gideons. Thanks to the Gideons, but yeah. the hotels don't have to do that. My grandpa was a Gideon. So mine was too. mine. Mine too. <gasps> oh, dun, dun, all of our dun, grandpas dun. were Gideons. <laughs> so your Hindu grandpa? No, that's really <laughs> unusual. My Christian grandpa. Oh, um, but. That the, carrying a Bible in a hotel room is not something. I mean, if you're Jewish or you're mm -hmm. a Muslim or whatever, and there's a Christian well, Bible there, could you be offended by that? The, the now they do the put Jew the could read in half there. the yeah. Bible. Well, my point is this: putting a sticker on the ceiling to show you where Mecca is is yeah. no different than putting a Bible in the bedstand. Yeah, I guess. So I guess we disagree with Franklin Graham on this issue. What, what was more upsetting, though? I mean, I I don't understand because it it just seems to be getting very very tribal. You know, to say, hey, why our tribe should stand up because our mm -hmm. tribe is, you know, their tribe is getting stuff and would, would you know, do, where's our stuff? Um, the comments under this article were just dreadful. I were mean, they dreadful, meaning they were not liking what he was saying? No. Or they were agreeing the, with the him? The anti-Muslim comments, mm -hmm. they, they were, and I think it was posted to a, you know, a conservative site, mm -hmm. but it was, you know, we Christians should rise up, we need to s stick up for ourselves, and then some people just flat out, you know, insulting uh, Muslims everywhere and calling them derogatory names, you know. That so breaks it was, my heart. It was really that does not That does not speak well of us. <laughs> well, I, what it speaks to is when, when one group of people have been privileged in a society for a long, long time, and then suddenly they lose their privileged position, it can feel like you're being attacked and your rights are being taken away, when in fact you're not losing anything. It's just another group is, is gaining a level of recognition that you've always had. So it's almost like you're the only child, and then your parents have a new mm -hmm, kid, mm -hmm. and you're not getting all the attention right. anymore, and so you take it out on the new kid. Right, and you don't want the new kid to right. get to pray to Mecca whenever he wants to. But what, what's concerning to me is how difficult, I mean, I'm sorry, but I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. Oh, don't sell okay. yourself short. No. You're, you're sharper than you think. <laughs> Thank you. There's a lot of dull tools out there. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> you watch television. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. <laughs> Thank you. But my point is, I mean, pretty quickly, I can come to the conclusion that the loving thing to do is to be loving. It's to be hospitable. Is to be hospitable. Yeah. Is to be kind and caring. Mm -hmm. So what I don't understand is how difficult can that be as a Christian to come to that conclusion when you're dealing with the others? Yeah, but here's the problem. You, it's very, very difficult to be love, loving and kind and hospitable when you're afraid. When people feel that Muslims are a threat and they're gonna destroy our country or they're gonna take over our culture, whatever the, the rhetoric is, you can't go from that and then say, now love them and care for them and bless them. And leaders like Graham, who are constantly trying to stoke up Christians' fears, I'll come out and say it, they are not leading by the Spirit of Christ. That is not what the Spirit of Christ does. It does not make us more and more afraid. Well, exactly, and, and that, you know, it, when you look at what Christ said and how he said to treat your enemies, he absolutely said, move towards them, mm -hmm. love them. Bless them. You know, Pray for them. Give them if they Forgive have them. already taken something yeah. from you. So that's what's hard for me to understand is that when it's so clear in Scripture from Christ's mouth himself how we are to love our enemies, I do not understand why that's not being lived out by not only our leaders but by just people that call themselves Christians. I just don't understand that. Okay, do you know who John Oliver is? I do. Mm -hmm. He was the reporter that used to report as a correspondent on the Daily Show with yes. John Stewart. Yes. And he was and br British. Yeah, he still is. Still is. is. Yeah. Yes. He is British. And he is a very dry sense of humor. Yes. And now he has his own show. Where? In New York. <laughs> <laughs> on what network? Oh, um... HBO. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And it's a weekly show. Yeah. And it's, it's called, called 
the weekly show. Last week last tonight. Week tonight. Yeah. Last week tonight. Yeah. Last week tonight. And it's and he's actually getting really good reviews mm-hmm. for doing some really good journalism. I never thought, honestly, he was that funny. I yeah, I wasn't a huge fan, but I've watched a couple of the HBO shows and and they're better than I thought they would be. Okay. They're they're because actually Because I, I just don't think he's in the same ballpark as like a Stephen Colbert or a John Stewart. But how good were they their first or Jimmy Fallon their for first sure. year? How good were they there? Like Jimmy Fallon. Do you remember his first year? Oh yeah, it buddy. It was so long ago. I watched was, I watched every single episode. That's a very different kind of comedy. Last, that's a different kind yeah. of thing though. Yeah, it is, but it's not so far different from the way Stuart, Stephen Colbert started out. And he no. was pretty darn funny from the get-go. I, don't, I didn't watch him mm. for the first few years, so I don't even know. So Oliver uh, is taking on uh, televangelists. I Uh-oh. think he's partly successful because his name is Oliver, and we all associate that with cute little English Oliver. boys. Oliver! Exactly. Oliver. His name's John. Well, well, what's his yeah, show about? Oliver. I mean, is it... Is it's, it's like, it's like uh, 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 Late Stephen night show? Colbert. Okay. But they, he goes it's, kind of in-depth in the one... Well, it's, it's closer to Bill Maher, you know, because yeah. it's... Um, but he does. He does tend to go more in-depth on one subject, and they do more investigation. They actually right. do actual investigative journalism. Seriously? Yeah. Oh. Seriously. But then they make fun of it. Okay. Because it's funny. Uh, he walked through how televangelists take money from vulnerable and often sick people and benefit from vague tax policy, which grants them tax-exempt status even for million-dollar mansions. And it, and it got quite a bit of news when it came out, um, and it was called an expose that John Oliver was exposing, you know, and he exposed uh, Kenneth Copeland, and he exposed uh, Robert Tilton, and he exposed um, Creflo Dollar, I don't and, even know who that is. <clears throat> he's an African American preacher who he's the guy who told. Is that his real name? Could it be? I I think or or could it not be? I mean, who I would know choose that name? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you're a prosperity preacher if and your you last had, name is Dollar, yeah, I mean, is it on. too it's, obvious? It's like Richie Rich. Is it? I, mean, I know. Is it? Is it? Too obvious? Does it help you or I don't even? I, don't I mean, know. you might as well be Pastor Prosperity. Anyway, uh, Creflo, Creflo Dollar is the <laughs> <laughs> Reverend Richie. His first name is Get Rich. His last name is Quick. Um, he's the the one who said he needed a new jet and that he needed his congregation to, to come up with sixty five million dollars. Mm-hmm. He wanted the people that listened to him to come up with sixty five million dollars so that they could do more international travel and evangelism. Because there's no way to get overseas. Well, not uh, if you have to fly Emirates <coughs> and stay with all those Muslims. You don't want to do that. Other than on your own $65 million jet. Uh, and Kenneth Copeland has a $20 million jet that he's been using for personal reasons, which he's not supposed to. And um, my first, so, so he actually, and this is fun, he actually started sending money. John Oliver started sending money to Robert Tilton, who's a fairly infamous televangelist. You know, just like, if you give us a dollar, we'll give you this back. And so he sent him a dollar, and they it's, said, now if you give us a hundred dollars, we'll give you this back. Well, it's no, it's if you cede this money to our ministry, then God is going to bless you yes. with... You wait, know. so, wait a second. So you send a dollar, and what happens? Well, you think God's going to bless you with more. Yeah, but also he sent them back, like, a, a prayer hanky that it says he has personally blessed. Right. And then he sent them, like, a hundred dollars, and he sent them back an outline of Robert Tilton's foot. Stop it. And then he was supposed to draw an outline of his own foot over it and then stand in it to pray. It's weird stuff. And and yeah. some of these guys have been doing this kind of stuff for years. And they tell this heartbreaking story of a woman. Who buys this stuff? Well, here's what's sad is they tell the story of a woman who had terminal cancer, who her she ended up dying and her daughter was going through her finances and realized that her mother had been sending all kinds of money to one of these televangelists believing that if she just sent him enough money, God would heal her from her cancer. So it's really, it's horrible that... And she died. Yeah, and so the, the, often the most desperate people are the ones looking for a sense of control, and they believe what these guys are telling them. And, and then, it's horrible. Uh, but what John Oliver ends up focusing on, uh, he, he shows all these examples of pretty bad stuff and it says and yet not only is everything you've seen so far legal but the money people donate in response is tax free if you're registered as a religious nonprofit or especially a church you are given broad exemptions over taxation and regulation so to make a point of how easy it is to set up your own church and get tax exempt status uh, John Oliver starts his own church and it's called Our Lady of Perpetual Exemption um, and they actually set up a real church, and he's asking people to donate money to it. I bet you people are doing it. 
and they in droves. <laughs> are, so they're doing it. So my first response, so my, my, I think my brother sent me this story. I'd already noticed it. And then my brother sent me and said, you should mention it on the podcast. And my reaction was, there's just nothing new in here. Because, you know, Kenneth Copeland, Robert Tilton. Robert Tilton was first exposed when I was in high school as, as a charlatan. You know, he was he's on the... He's still around. He was, I know. It's, I was surprised he's still alive. I don't understand. Have you, have you seen the YouTube videos of him with, that have been altered? Like the farting ones? Yeah, Pastor Gas. Yeah, yeah that's very famous. In, oh, my goodness. Because <laughs> it was done by someone on his staff. It was really? actually It was an inside job. It was some, one of the one of the camera guys. I have to confess that when I'm having a really down day, <laughs> those pick me up. Yeah. He's, he's praying on camera with his eyes closed, scrunched up really tight. And and one of his editors put in fart sound effects every time That's he would. That's so boyish. <laughs> but it's really Isn't funny. Isn't it? <laughs> Isn't that boy? Wait a minute. Are you saying that there's gender specific totally humor? humor? Absolutely. Are you kidding? I me? live in a house with five men. Trust me. But I but, don't find it all funny. But That's not. You're saying women don't laugh at gas humor? Amy Potty Schumer. Humor? Yeah. Okay. Amy Schumer. They do, but I'm just saying it's technically. <laughs> Boy humor. I, I, re I resent your stereotypes of my gender. <laughs> Wait, can I just say one thing yes. about this? Yeah. I'm sitting here apoplectic about what I'm hearing. Yeah. And I'm suddenly reminded of something that has captured my attention over this last week. And I don't know if you've seen it, but it's this documentary called Going Clear. Oh, oh have Scientology. You heard about it? Yeah. Yeah. I have been blown away. If you haven't Did seen you watch it, it, I've watched it no. twice now. Okay. And it started off as this man wanting to actually learn about Scientology. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't supposed to be an expose. And he wanted to genuinely learn about it but as he did and he dove into it he was just blown away this is, this is nuts yeah and so there's this a very large amount of upper echelon leadership that have left over 30 years or whatever right. and are speaking out about right. what's going on and when they talk to you about how they got sucked in to these schemes and about how about giving all this money and how it was made into a church and how they have billions and billions of dollars because people are giving it to this church right. you hear they'll tell you exactly how they got sucked in and why they couldn't get out, even though they, they were witnessing and, a, and being preyed on horribly. Mm -hmm. And they were witnessing terrible well, part things. Part of that, though, is also how that Church of Scientology got the tax-exempt status from the IRS. Right. Because that, that's kind of what John Oliver's mm -hmm. thing is, is mm -hmm. the government and the IRS have taken such a loose right. definition <clears throat> of what constitutes a religious organization that even a made-up cult like Scientology can get tax exempt status. Well, did you hear how they got it? Well, I know they threatened and bullied and all kinds of... It was an under the table right. deal where they said, we'll stop suing the IRS and individual IRS people mm -hmm. if you give us tax right. exempt they status. basically browbeat the government into recognizing their... Not only does the IRS not strictly define churches, but the agency makes no attempt to evaluate the content of any church's doctrine to see if it's religious, as long as the beliefs are genuine and not illegal, before giving it tax-exempt status. And that benefit can go to everything these churches own, even their owners' huge mansions. Now, we talked to Rob about that right. uh -huh. at Okaboji three weeks ago. The, the, the marijuana church in Indiana yes. and that kind like, of Yes, like, why can't you just say that's not a real religion and he says it's the First Amendment. It's it's the ec uh, exercise clause. It's not the establishment clause. It's the exercise clause, which says the government will not prohibit you from exercising your religious views. And as it's been tested in court, the test is, what is a religious view? A religious view is a deeply held view that plays the role of traditional religion in someone's life. So if it's a defining characteristic of the way you see yourself in the world, yes. it's a religious view, even if it doesn't come from even one of the traditional If it appears that you just made it up and you're the only one that holds right. it. If because it's, if the government were to assign what is or is not religious, then you're violating the establishment clause. Yes. 
which right. you can't do that either. So no. it's, they're kind of caught. The, the government can't do it because of the way the Constitution is written. So, so my reaction to my brother was, well, this isn't even a news story because none of this is news. It's, it's because John Oliver grew up in the UK. He didn't know about televangelism, and yeah. now he's here, and now he's, now he's finding out, and he's shocked. Well, we all were shocked in the 80s when right. they did right. the first exposés. And Rob's point of view was, wait, 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 wait. Millennials yeah. weren't alive in the 80s. They missed all that. So this is news to them. Huh. And there's a movement uh, in, in some circles to strip churches of their tax-exempt status. And this is the kind of thing, because this is what, you remember, this is what Stephen Colbert did with super PACs. He mm -hmm. wanted to oh, demonstrate yeah. what a horrible thing super PACs were. Yep. And so he started his own just to show how right. easy it was to start one and how you could basically hide money from, you know, who, who are the donors. Um, and this is the same thing. So John Oliver's taking a page out of Stephen Colbert's playbook to say, well, let's do the same thing with church tax exemptions to show how easy it is to misapply you know, money, to misuse yeah. money. And the problem is, and this was my brother's point of view, if, if they can start to swing the point of view of millennials on tax exemption for churches, it could have significant implications, not, you know, in five years, but in 10, 15, right. 20 years oh, on right. churches starting to lose tax-exempted status. That's what bothered me about the reporting. At the very beginning of the segment, he gives about a 10-second blurb to... There's many churches in this country that are doing a lot of good work and helping a lot of people in the poor. We're not talking about them tonight. We're talking about these, you know, nefarious. Right. So he just dismisses all the, you know, thousands and thousands of ministries around the country of all different religious backgrounds that are doing good work to focus on a handful of horrible people that are abusing the system. The problem is if you keep the focus on the abusers of the system, then it it reinforces a, a cultural bias, which a lot of millennials already have, that religion is inherently bad. Right. And then right. you, the problem is if you value religious expression as a society and you want to encourage religious expression, including the good works that religions do, by giving them tax-exempt status, you're going to have to tolerate a fringe of outliers who are going to abuse that system. And now we're going to focus on those outliers who are abusing it right. and take away the benefit from all of the legitimate ministries that are doing good work. That's my and concern that as well. would be bad. That's throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Exactly. It is. Or as the atheist we congregation in ever... Los Angeles said, throwing out the baby Jesus and keeping the bathwater. Hmm. We just can't ever seem to live in the middle. <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's just got to be one extreme or the other. Well, I think what it does speak to, though, is especially when when these kinds of abuses are happening in the name of Christianity or in the name of Christ, it, it does sort of behoove those of us in the church to police... To discipline ourselves. To discipline others. our own. Yeah. To right, say, you know, right. this is not acceptable. This, right. is, this is antithetical to the teachings of Christ and Scripture. You are hurting people by this. And if, if we Wasn't don't... Wasn't that kind of what we're doing If we don't do that here? ourselves, then the government's going to have what? to step in and do it. We're, we're policing. <laughs> Well, well, I mean, we're, it's why you're kind of calling out Franklin we're Graham, right? Self policing. We're saying, uh, uh, yeah, but it's really hard to do when we don't have. We're such foul. a disunited movement. Right. You know, there's no right. congregational or, or denominational authority that can come into a a cleflo dollar so, and say, uh, uh, uh. So does that mean that we really can't get bent out of shape when the global Muslim community does not rise up and knock out the the radical elements? It's, it's kind of the same thing, right? Well, the, the it most, is the same thing. The why can't we, I stop Westboro Baptist Church? Right. Well, <laughs> yeah, but the most we can yeah. do is speak out to the audience we do have and say, this is wrong or this is a violation of Scripture or this right. is not what Jesus taught. But we All have right, no well, technical authority you know over what? Westboro I'm an, Baptist. I'm just going to go on record. She's on record, guys. I'm going to go on record out. and say, Franklin Graham, I love you <laughs> in the name of Jesus. And I do. And I am asking you to please love your brothers and sisters and stop stop hating on other people or at because least stop putting it on facebook yeah or don't put it on facebook that's just Do you not think good. people over 50 should use facebook oh yeah get me in trouble for that again <laughs> yes they should they should just be using wisdom like the rest of us about what they post. and maybe get some advice from your kids on how far things can go Right. I, I, I've talked to people who said, I, when I posted the first time, I had no idea everyone would be able to see it. Like, do you think Franklin Graham yeah. doesn't know that everyone can see what <laughs> no, he's No, I think he see? knows everyone can see it. I do too. Mm. Hmm. Mm. Mm. Hey, you 
you got email? Is it spam? Or just another post from Franklin Graham? There's an airport in Orlando who wants to show some hospitality to the boys from the Emirates Airlines of uh, Dubai. Dubai. <laughs> It had to rhyme. Can we please show just a little bit of love when our Muslim friends come down from flying above and they just want to go to Disneyland and see Mickey with his white glove and maybe say a prayer on their way so they can have what they think is a really good day and we really shouldn't want to chase them away and show them the love of God in the airport at Orlando next to the Starbucks. And everywhere else. And everywhere else. But Orlando is the happiest place on earth. So shouldn't we love? <laughs> okay. See you next week. Bye, everybody. See ya. Go in love. <laughs> <laughs>